Aia? Now that you feel blessed with that intro, you know who else feels blessed? Your fellow Arab. He is released. The Haitian Dangerous Gang, they released him all this barbecue, barbecue, all the things we talked about in the last video. Mr. Barbecue decided not to barbecue him after he got all this pressure from international news. And there are some updates that I want to correct myself that there were some misinformation in the last video. We're going to go through it, uh, all of it today. After two, three weeks of disappearing, this is his first tweet saying, cameraman never dies. He tried to make an entrance with this line i've been released glory to god christ is king and minutes after that he tweeted i was kidnapped purely for the color of my skin i was being kidnapped for being a blank if you don't know what blank means don't worry i didn't know it at the beginning as well blank means a white boy africans they saw white money C catch him cat put back in his head and if you have no idea what i'm talking about this is your first day on the internet a first topic or drama you got yourself into it's very addictive just a heads up i'll give you a quick context what we talked about in the last video mr uh, your fellow arab uh, mr youtuber he first started as doing fortnite videos that fell off so he started uh, you know starting to do dangerous vlogs what is dangerous vlogs going meeting cartel members meeting dangerous people wanted people by the fbi basically risking his life for content for like it's like a sort of a journalism i would say i wouldn't really call him a journalist but i would say that in that kind of line he visited many dangerous places but his last the destination that he visited was in haitian their caribbean gangs over there he had a interview with Mr. Barbecue, who is the, I want to say the leader of the country, or he runs it. He's like a gang uh, leader, but he runs the country because the president, they say, yalla bye, take care because of the riots happening in the country. And Mr. YouTuber always coming up with crazy ideas. He decided to interview this gang leader named Barbecue and hope this barbecue guy will not barbecue him. Long story short, he was going on his way to meet this guy, another gang this is where the misinformation, you know, I gave you. Another gang grabbed him and, you know, took him in and they were like, white boy, white money. So to correct myself, in that country, there's a lot of different type of gangs. He was on his way to meet Mr. Barbecue's gang, but Lamos 400 something, they, they're the ones who kidnapped him. A whole different uh, gang. And he, the guy who kidnapped them, released a video of them after the interactions and all the news that got out. Bro had a whole conversation. We're going to go through it. But he posted this video releasing the two. Flip, flip. I guess after three weeks of spending time together, uh, Mr. YouTuber Arab, he told them about how YouTube works and he t uh, they've been sharing life stories and he told them how, you know, every YouTuber has an intro. So bros, the gang leader, uh, Lanmo Sanju, this is his name. He goes by the name of King. He's the leader, not Lamos 400. He's 400 Mawazo. His intro out of all the things, blip, 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 blip. <clears throat> I mean, it is iced out. You see a guy wearing two Rolex watches, you know he's the real deal. Flip, flip. <laughs> As you can see, the guy on the left is your fellow Arab YouTuber, and the guy on the right, these two were the ones who were kidnapped. The guy on the right is his fixer slash cameraman slash translator slash city tour guide. Now, I'm not very fluent in Caribbean. I'm not very fluent in Haitian language. But luckily for you, in the past 24 hours, I've studied the language and I will be translating for you the whole video. <laughs> Swag, swag. <laughs> Merci, wa, parce que on prend soin nous bien. <laughs> ok, le monde est ton plaisir, ok. 
Et pas pour tout là. Je pense que je vais jouer en bleu. Ok, mais pas pour le bon pour la couleur. Merci, frère. Merci, frère. <laughs> Honestly, while they were hugging, they should have gone blip blip. The person who posted this apparently knew a little bit more than me in the Haitian uh, Caribbean language. He said Sanju, the, the guy in the middle, the leader of the 400 Mazo, published this video with these two guys, the, this guy and the other guy, and saying he will not receive any ransom or nothing. This is the result of an intervention from Jimmy, Mr. Barbecue. He said when I woke up this morning, he explained that someone offered Sanju, being the guy in the middle, $100,000 for Malouf's release. However, Scheiser, as a matter of principle, Scheiser is Mr. Uh, barbecue, huh? Mr. Barbecue, in a matter of principle, opposed the kidnapping of any ransom payment and convinced Sanju to release him. In the video, the YouTuber and the translator, they seem like they've been fine and good spirit and they haven't been mistreated in any way i mean obviously if you're going to create a make a video you're not going to be, you know have them all beat up and all like you know in bad clothes and bad shape this looks like very fake clothing like fake gucci's fake things you can buy in the in africa and they're uh they're just they just gave them to wear it and they're like be nice or if you if you are not not nice in this video i will slash you i will feed you to my goats bleep, bleep. that's why the whole energy in the video was kind of odd and the hug was so forced but honestly i still think when they hugged they should have gone bleep, bleep. he got into a call with sneeko and this is the th these are the things he said we we're on our way to interview barbecue and that motherfucker le mont saint -Jus just kidnaps me they, they 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 throw us into a shack for four hours and they hold a shotgun and, a, and an assault rifle to us for four hours in a dark trailer and it was two crackheads and they had their fingers on the trigger and then four hours later this boss this la mont saint -Jou guy shows up with 20 20 people 10 of them armed and they're just staring at me like like as if i'm some money son because i'm white I mean, to be fair, it looks like bro, Mr. Blip Blip, he saw an opportunity to add more watches to his hands. And he took the opportunity. I mean, fair enough. And then they, they let me call my brother. And they took a few videos with me where I'm very excited. That's why you see some people on socials going, oh, he wasn't kidnapped. He's just chilling with the guy in his house. Yeah, well, I'm fucking surrounded by 10 dudes with guns in the middle of the desert. Of course, I'm going to be friendly. I know in the last video, we said this whole thing can be scripted. And it, there's still a chance of getting scripted. We're going to get to that at the end of the video. But it kind of makes sense if, you know, he's in a faking his mood. Be like, oh, I'm okay. Uh, yeah, but his uh, body language is saying something else. It's a very long stream. I'm just going to break it down for you. He was on his way to meet the leader. He got kidnapped by another gang. The other gang took him in. They kept him somewhere for like two weeks and uh they started negotiating the price and this is where they got in touch these are the text messages with um the brother this is posted by lord miles if you don't know who he is he's the guy we talked about a couple of months ago where he got he got held as a hostage with taliban these guys are something else taliban haitian gang they're going interviewing these people and um yeah i guess they're risking everything for those because it's something they love, I guess. Bro, I love something else. The Haitian gang texts from his phone saying, Hello, is this Arab? This is Arab's brother? He's like, Hey, man, is he okay? They're like, He is not. He is kidnapped in Haiti. Then they get on a call for 16 minutes uh, talking, and uh, the guy, the gang leader, telling them the ransom money, how much it's going to be. Now, Lord Mars says they were both kidnapped less than two days after they heard that Arab has been permitted to talk to his friend, being the Mr. Barbecue, to the kidnapper's phone. The ransom was $600,000. He went to 300 k then he went further to five figures, I think, which was the $40,000 that they agreed on. Now, these things are not confirmed. We're just believing on Lord Miles' uh, words. Now, before you go to these dangerous kind of places, these uh, gang things, places where there's a lot of kidnappings happen, your government, usually the US, uh, you know, Canada, whatever you are, they tell you, be careful. Do not go to this place. We highly encourage you, do not go to this place. If Because if you go, there's 99% chance that your dumbass, something is going to happen to your dumbass. And we will not be responsible. So this is on you. And you get, you go, you get caught and you expect the government to come and get you. Because he also said the US government and the State Department is very hands off on helping. Even, the, even though his Arab is a US citizen, he has a US passport, they still refuse to help their citizens. Honestly, if I was in Arab's situation, you need to be smart about these things. If you want the US government to come in, uh, Navy SEALs, 
uh, black ops. They want to come in. You need to just identify yourself as a female WNBA player. And they are going to do everything. They're even going to exchange the um, uh, serial killer, top killer, evil guy from Haitia. And they're going to, you know, trade uh, places from present to present. Or Arab should tell the U.S. government, send them, send them a message that uh, Haita, Haisha has... A lot of oil in the country and they'll be sending the u.s military to help the situation these these are uh, facts that he could he could have got himself out of but i guess he got lucky because mr barbecue came to his rescue now, there's a lot of more things the bro posted basically what they said was they knew from the first you know few days that he's been kidnapped as they you know had a conversation I won't show you all the text. I'll just summarize the whole thing for you. They knew from the first uh, few days, but they decided to keep it low key. Just uh, let's see if it's serious or not. Let's get it over with. They said they had a meeting. They even paid the Mr. King, the guy with glasses. Bleep, bleep. They already paid him, but the negotiation went wrong and he was not, uh, Mr. Arab was not released. They were waiting off the whole international news thing. They were holding it off just to see if they can get it in some other ways. He spent a lot of time there and they thought it's this is the time this is the chance to just go international and pressure them with the news so they'll be released so when they didn't see any other way they were like hello this guy kidnap me boom everywhere like sneeko they said lord mouse this guy's new from the beginning the second the international news came out mr king uh, mr bloop bloop got so angry at it and barbecue being the leader of two gangs this bottom uh, this middle guy bloop bloop is Leader of one gang. Barbecue sent a message to Mr. Blue Blue that if you do not release him, you are going to go to war. This is not a good image for our country. Let him go. You got your money. What else do you want? And he started getting pissed, but now he had seen the news. So then we said, fuck it, we're going international pressure. Dude, this motherfucker kidnapped two famous journalists. Like, he kidnapped the strongest journalist in Haiti and he kidnapped me. Yeah, you know he, I mean? he's, like, he's well known for kidnapping, we kidnapping the people. I think Barbecue personally called the guy and said, if you don't release him, we're gonna go to war with you. And that's why we got out. I was in the house of Shaytan. Like, these guys worship the devil. This part is not gonna make sense to any of your chat. They're gonna think I'm crazy. These guys are bulletproof. So I'm guessing he's out of the country now. He's back in America where he lives, and that's why he's shit-talking them, telling them these haywanats, they were uh, worshiping the devil, they were worshiping the sh shaitan. He was talking about his, a little bit of, uh, about his experience over there. Now, the way he explained his story, the things that happened over there, he said they cooked for us, they, uh... You know, it was, it was chill, but it was still very scary. These devil worshippers, they were uh, putting still guns at us, but I was, you know, trying to tell them jokes and all. I was trying to keep the environment very, you know, friendly. I was smiling. I was, I was full of energy. You know, in the last video, my best guess was this whole thing can be, it's just public uh, stun. And, you know, this is one way to get a lot of attention to drop the next video. And the next video is going to be nuclear because everyone wants to watch it. I'm very invested in this story. I'm waiting for him to share his experience share the next video on his channel but so far nothing is confirmed yet either it was real or not we just have to wait for the video to come out then we will make another video and we will judge it and rate it 1 to 10 if it is scripted or not i swear to god if the video comes out and the title of the video is my two weeks experience with the haitian gang worst two weeks of my life something like that comes out i am not believing one single bit of it it will be very obvious once the video comes out and we're going to see that see it by ourselves and sneeko announced something as well he's going to be doing a stream with taliban um lord miles reached out to me and he wants to uh, he wants to meet up and do a taliban stream i will go there but i gotta make sure that i'm, I'm britain bo i'm gonna bring security like i don't care Unless the Taliban gets creeped out without it, because there's no chance that I'm just gonna like blindly follow Arab into Afghanistan, dolo with the Taliban after this will happen. Why not? After Arab got all that attention, maybe it is a good idea, guys. Guy, it's an inspirational video, honestly, for him getting kidnapped and making out, making it out alive, being a famous journalist and a famous YouTuber, and everyone should follow his footsteps. Everyone should be as brave as him to get that public views my friend this should be a lesson for everyone this should be a lesson for him as well go back to fortnite do not go put yourself in this situation again but the way it looks like he hasn't learned his lesson and he's going to do it again my friend you don't have to lose a leg or an arm or a hand to any kind of 
gang or something for you to understand yeah i get it the whole thing journalism youtuber he's doing something he loves but love something else and now sneeko deciding to be with them try something different try something new you know uh, spice up the content going to dubai with these rich families is not enough so i'm going to do what i'm going to go to taliban and i'm going to take security guards because you know security guards can stop these taliban guys is because talibans are not that strong you know they my security guys can stop them if anything happens because it's not like the, the taliban went against the u.s army and won don't poop your pants when i said that if you're american on you're like no we won but whatever it's not the point taliban is controlling the country right now nothing all 20, all the years spent in that country nothing has been done it's just tax money that you paid for i mean people like him are doing things outside the box that's why they're getting successful at what they do and now he's a international person everyone who didn't i didn't even know mr fellow arab existed and now i do maybe i should th start thinking outside the box as well did you guys see that big ass spit just fly off maybe i should start thinking outside the box too you know, maybe do do like a type of video no one has done it before and maybe then we can, you know, get the YouTube algorithm and more people like you can discover me. Guys, I have an announcement to make. From next month, after Ramadan, obviously, you know, we need to finish the fasting. We need to, because I cannot do it on daytime. After Ramadan, we are going to be doing one-on-one -on -one exclusive interview with Great White Sharks. So stay tuned for those kind of videos. It's going to be me and Mr. Shark, and I'm going to ask about his experience, this whole thing, and hoping that, you know, inshallah, he will not eat me. S something in that course. Maybe I should do that video, and I will get viral, because if you do stupid things, you get stupid views. That's how it works on social media. I am not encouraging anyone. Please don't do it and say, Kush, you told me to... I, your problem, your responsibility. Don't do anything stupid, honestly. I don't know what I'm talking about, bro. Yalla, take care. Bye.